What up guys, it's Quantum Nerd here with a new unboxing. The new Pioneer AVH X4800 BS car stereo. The stereo sounds great, looks great, and I'm going to show you how to install it. Stay tuned. Bear in mind, if you decide to buy a car stereo and install it on your own, you must find the remaining parts pertaining to your make and model of your vehicle. First up, we have the remote control. I never used one for a car stereo, and but I don't plan on using one now. Followed by the screws for our car adapter mounts. Here's our microphone for our hands-free phone calling. Next up, we have the USB male to female extension cord for our USB audio and video. Here's our car stereo harness, specifically made for this unit, and I will show you how to solder the connections. And here we got some documentation for our Pioneer limited time warranty for one year. And next up is our car stereo manual, which we will need for our installation. And last but not least, the car stereo itself, which is well packaged with thick styrofoam and static resistant coating. The AVH X4800BS sports an amazing 7-inch clear resistive touchscreen with a 800 by 480 resolution that has an aspect ratio of 16 by 9. Also, you can listen to CD tracks and watch DVDs on this stereo as well. This unit also has Bluetooth capabilities, which is one of the reasons why I wanted this stereo in the first place. You can stream audio and hands-free calling with it. This unit can also play your Spotify and Pandora selections while connected through Bluetooth. You can also run mix tracks as well. Let's take some time to go over the connections on the back. First off, we have the RCA video and audio inputs. Next to it is a video output for a second display. And here, we have three audio subwoofer outputs. At the top left, we have the rear view camera input set to switch to this source while in reverse. And that yellow rectangular connector at the top is for the third party navigation system. At the bottom left, we have the external USB for plugging in your own source of music. On the right side of the stereo, starting at the top left, is the input for the microphone for our hands-free calling. And next to that is for wired remote devices for your steering, such as your hot buttons for your volumes, for your presets, uh, stuff like that, changing your tracks. Top right is the connection to your Series XM console. Bottom right left is where you plug in your radio harness that came with the box. Next right of it is the auxiliary input, and the bottom right corner is for your FM AM antenna. I have the pleasure of owning a Dodge Avenger 2011, which means I'm responsible for finding the remaining parts for my make and model to work with our stereo. Amazon.com will typically or have everything you will need. Just type the name of the following items I'm about to mention into the search bar, followed by make, model, and year. Here's what you will need. You will need a pair of radio mounts to mount the stereo into the center console of your dashboard. Then you will need a radio pro. This one is not required for your stereo to operate, but if you plan on using the hotkeys or macros from your steering wheel, you will need this. Next, you will need a wire harness that will connect to the existing radio connector that was unplugged from the factory radio. And last but not least, an FM AM antenna cable. This is not required for your stereo to operate unless you plan on not listening to the radio, which isn't much of a radio if you ask me. Next is binding the car harness to the stereo harness. This is where the fun begins. Deciding on which wires connect to what is simple. All you need to do is connect each solid color or color stripe wire to the other corresponding wire. You must strip the end of each wire before connecting them. To strip the wires, you can use a sharp edge like scissors, but it's easier to use a certified tool and will help prevent injury. As I mentioned before, I prefer soldering, but if you never used a soldering iron before, which is probably most of you, then I recommend crimping the connection. 
Crimping is the easiest way to secure a connection between two wires, which only involves a crimping sleeve and a special crimper tool, or even a needle nose pliers will do. That being said, soldering requires a few more steps than crimping with more risk involved, since you are dealing with melting metals with extreme heat, but will benefit with a stronger connection. You will need a soldering iron, rosin core solder, several heat shrink tubing, or electric tape. I recommend heat shrink since it's more durable and won't likely give away. Just apply a small amount of heat from a flame from different angles to start the heat shrink process. Here we have the Radio Pro 4. It is important to set the placement interface before installing. Consult your owner's manual to find out what number will work with your brand. Not doing so may have undesired effects on your stereo. Setting the interface is actually quite simple. You have a small wheel numbered 0 through 9. All you need to do is grab a small flathead screwdriver and turn it to the desired number that the owner's manual tells you to. In my case, I have a Pioneer stereo, so the number I turn to will be 7. Once that's done, the radio probe will plug into the harness we just soldered. It is important when searching for the right kind of harness for your make and model. If you're going to use the steering wheel hot buttons to control your stereo, you must find the correct harness that will have a special 16 pin connector to connect to the Radio Pro. The Radio Pro 4 comes with a short 4 pin connector to 3.5mm jack. The 4 pin plugs into the Radio Pro and the jack plugs into the wire remote input on the back of the stereo. The last thing before installing our new stereo is to attach the plastic stereo mounts. Being plastic, avoid over tightening. We are now ready to install our stereo. Try to use common sense and tender care when removing the center dash cover. It's your car after all, and no one wants to damage their vehicle. It is recommended to disconnect your car battery to protect yourself from electric shock or shorts. But on my make and model, my battery is located behind the driver's side front tire, and I would have to dislodge the protective cover as well that surrounds the tire, which would involve extra hours of work for something so simple if it were under the hood. It is important to take your time because most modern cars use plastic tabs to lock your dashboard in place and are easy to break. If you are not sure how to remove your covering, like I once did, then resort to your car manual or better yet, find a video on YouTube on how to remove your dashboard cover. Now that we have the dash cover off, we are now ready to start removing our old stereo. Once the stereo is removed, we will also need to remove the rear metal brackets so the new stereo will fit. What tool will we need, you ask? A torque screwdriver, of course!
It looks like the install was a complete success. I really enjoyed making this video and if you like this video please subscribe. I have others you may like and hope this helps you in your next install. I will see you in the next one. Take care.